That's from um, Commissioner Hill, um, but all the other commissioners are present. So the second item would then be adoption of the agenda as amended. I have a motion to that effect. Commissioner Anderson. Commissioner Mishra. And all in favor of the amended agenda? So that's carried. We have confirmation of the minutes from the last meeting. Can I have somebody, in the Commissioner Major? And a seconder, Commissioner Hobson. Any discussion or issues or concerns or compliments to with the minutes? Not seeing any. Um, I will call for that vote. All in favor of the minutes? <coughs> the minutes are accepted. Just wonderful. Thank you. We'll um, move on to the public hearing portion. Um, again, we are doing this um, via the YouTube stream, and there has been an opportunity for people to join through um, Teams, but I believe that we will only have the applicants in person the today. There is a, uh, the applicants are here, yeah. and uh, one other attendee is here. Okay. Well, I may just for, I may still forego the um, rules if there's only sure. one person. So um, I'll look at administration for the first item. Thank you, and uh, good evening, uh, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Planning Commission members. Uh, so we do have a few items tonight. The first one is a rezoning and variance. So let me let us pull up the presentation. We can get started, please. Just give us a moment. Okay, thank you. So the first one, yes, is a rezoning and variance for uh, 25 on 20th Street and the closed lane surrounding that property. So the, uh, the site in question is located uh, generally west of 18th Street and wedged between Rosser Avenue and the Canadian Pacific Railway line. And zooming in more closely, it is on the east side of the dead end portion of 20th Street north of Rosser Avenue. Uh, so you see 25 on 20th Street in the middle of that uh, yellow uh, highlighted area and then the uh, surrounding U-shaped type parcel that is the closed lane in question. Uh, and uh, it is southeast of the former Brandon University physical plant which is shown as number 22 uh, in this map here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a look at the front of the site as it stands right now. Uh, so the, the photograph is taken from 20th Street proper. Uh, this is a view of the uh, closed lane on the south side, uh, which currently provides access to uh, at least one, if not both properties immediately to the south of this uh, parcel. And these are pictures of the adjacent properties in the area. Uh, so uh, across the street, uh, across Rosser Avenue, uh, as well as uh, as well as the former uh, physical plant, as you can see in the southwest, uh, the sorry lower left picture. Sorry. So the rezoning is to go from the residential low density zone to the residential moderate density zone, and that's for the closed lane portion only. Uh, to clarify, the property itself, 25 on 20th Street, is already zoned residential moderate density. Uh, the variance is to reduce the front yard from 4.6 meters to 3, the interior side yard on the north side from 3 meters to 1.2, and to reduce the uh, minimum distance uh, of a balcony projection from the front sight line uh, from 4 meters to 1.5. Uh, what you see here is the uh, site plan uh, submitted by the applicant uh, showing where the building is proposed relative to the overall site. Uh, let me see. Yeah, laser pointer here. So you, uh, so it may be too faint for everybody to be able to see, but this is the outline of the boundary between the original parcel of land and the closed lane. So the closed lane surrounds this property here, or the the former property. Uh, two existing accesses will remain uh, for the two properties immediately to the south. Uh, the side yard uh, reduction is only on the north side as there's a two-way driveway required on the south side pushing the building back away from the south sight line. 
So with respect to the rezoning application in our analysis, the Planning and Buildings Department believes this proposal conforms with the applicable, applicable policies of the development plan, uh, including the provision of a mix of housing options and uh, providing uh, improved housing affordability, as well as providing a range of housing densities and increased density in close proximity to major institutions. Uh, in this case, it's close to the Brown University, um, schools, transit routes, and uh, major collector streets. Uh, the closed lane is currently partially zoned residential low density uh, and residential moderate density, and so we require this rezoning application to make sure that the, uh, the entire parcel is zoned RMD to accommodate the proposed 12-unit uh, multiple uh, dwelling building. Uh, the proposed development does meet the majority of bulk and setting requirements, other than the variance, uh, the variance requests being made tonight, uh, so we'll get to that uh, next. With respect to our analysis, uh, though the proposed setbacks and the balcony are closer to the sight lines than adjacent dwellings, they are still consistent with uh, what is found for corner yard setbacks of dwellings along the same street, uh, such as dwellings at 1937 and 2003 Rosser Avenue. Uh, the city requires a sidewalk along 20th Street for the site frontage due to this development, which will provide some buffering between the proposed building and vehicle traffic to mitigate the impact of the reduced front yard and the balcony projection. Also, the property to the north has overhead Manitoba hydro facilities close to the shared property line, which limits future development opportunities anyways. Uh, the proposed setback and balcony projections will provide more space for the parking area and the driving aisle that also serves the access of the neighboring properties to the south, enabling better traffic functionality on this site. And apart from the requested uh, reductions, uh, the proposal otherwise complies with all other applicable provisions in the development plan and the zoning bylaw. Uh, we did receive comments uh, warranting a development agreement uh, for these two applications, uh, highlights of which include construction of a sidewalk along 20th Street, which I alluded to earlier, uh, entering into a statutory easement with the city for public drainage purposes, uh, servicing assessment to demonstrate sufficient water and sewer capacity for this development, and contributions for both school and public reserve or parks purposes. And the applicant did mail out to, uh, uh, to nearby property owners uh, a public outreach package and uh, did not receive any comments of concern. And as of closing today, we did not receive any uh, representations in favor or in opposition to this application. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions at this time? Commissioner Major. Uh, through the chair to Mr. Mock, uh, I noticed that there, on the site drawing, there's provisions made for two properties that would front onto Rosser Avenue and access through this um, closed lane. Is there any provision for an agreement for those owners with this? Through the chair to uh, Commissioner Major, thank you for that question. Uh, yes, uh, since the lane was already closed, the city had already entered into uh, easement agreements with these two properties. Those agreements will remain in effect. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson. Uh, through the chair, in the development agreement where it says it, uh, to demonstrate sufficient water and sewer capacity, now if there isn't sufficient, does that mean the building has to be smaller? Through the uh, chair to Commissioner Anderson, uh, from my understanding from talking with the engineering department, uh, if there is not sufficient capacity, they may have to reduce units or uh, conversely, they may have to uh, reduce the capacity of the dwelling units themselves. So for example, um, and we, don't, we don't have floor plans, but let's say for example, they were proposing three bedroom units. They may have to reduce it to say one bedroom units in order to still meet those uh, capacity limitations. Any other questions at this time? Do we have the applicant? Um, does the applicant wish to present? Sorry, I don't know which person I'm looking at. Um, no, I think that pretty well sums it up for me. Oh. You want to step up to the podium and state your name and... Thank you. 
Hi, I'm uh, Joel Cardinal Schultz from Concept Homes, also the applicant. Um, yeah, I I don't have anything further um, to say. The only uh, I, I guess I did receive feedback from uh, the owner at the corner of Rosser and Twentieth, and he may be an issue down the problem, not for me, but but more for the city. I said we had to put a sidewalk on the 20th street side and he said well why it's not your property and i said part of the zone uh variance um from the city and said that it's in case the city decides to down the road uh move uh continue on with that sidewalk south and he said well that's my property and i said well it's kind of the city's property and he let me know that if the city put a sidewalk there he'd be jackhammering it out <laughs> so, so. Huge but other than that, that's the only feedback I got, so. Thank you for the heads up. Um, uh, commissioners, do you have any questions that the applicant could answer better than? It? No? Oh, thank you. No? Okay, well, thank you for. Yeah. And we don't have any comments in favor or opposition coming through. All right. Um, if the commissioners don't have any further questions and are ready to discuss it, I'll entertain the motion for closing the public hearing, which closes it for both the variation and the subdivision. I'll so move that the public hear I'll move that the uh, public hearing be for bylaw 7303 and variance application V-08-21 at closed lane at the perimeter of 25th and uh, 25 20th Street be concluded. Seconder, Commissioner Hobson. All those in favor? So that closes the public hearing. So then we'll, we'll do these um, uh, one at a time. So first, the uh, motion regarding the bylaw. That the Planning Commission recommend City Council approve bylaw number 7303 to rezone and close lane at the perimeter of 25 20th street uh, from residential low density to residential moderate density subject to the owner or successors entering into a development agreement with the city of brandon with the following conditions one through eight and that administration be authorized to prepare a development agreement containing all conditions and requirements to protect the city's interests in accordance with any procedures, policies, bylaws, and acts. And a seconder. Commissioner Hobson again. So I'm not looking in the right direction. Um, you used to discuss that motion? Nothing more than uh, it, it It seems to me to, to fit well in the area. It's a... It's an area that uh, certainly is, is large enough for this type of development and uh, seems to be well planned out and, and in an area that could use it uh, right in the university area. Thank you. Any other comments or questions, Commissioner Hobson? No, I agree. Like, it works for the area for the population. Thank you. Um, yeah, it meets the... Uh, the policies and the majority of the requirements and so I think it's a good fit. Thank you. So I'll call the question. All those in favor? So that's the um, rezoning. Did I say subdivision earlier? I need to say rezoning. Thank you. And now I'll take the um, a motion for the variance. Uh, the variance application V-08-21 to vary the following under the zoning bylaw at 25 20th Street and the closed lane at the perimeter uh, in the residential moderate density zone. Uh, table 1 under section 24 be, by decreasing the distance of balcony projection to the front sight line from 4 meters to 1.5 meters. Table 10 under section 51 by decreasing the required front yard from 4.6 meters to 3 meters interior side yard from 3 meters to 1.2 meters be approved in accordance with the letter of intent attachment B and site plan attachment C3. And the seconder for that, Commissioner Anderson. 
any further discussion um, to support that? I, I agree. It was sort of part and parcel with the um, previous, and it does uh, allow for the building to be built the way it was proposed. So all those in favor? It's all for. Thank you. So that's excellent. We'll move on um, then to uh, item B, the conditional use for 941 Second Street North. Yes, thank you again, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so we'll just bring up the presentation. And yes, condition use for 941 on 2nd Street North. Thank you. So uh, this uh, site is located on the north side of the Assiniboine River, northwest of the intersection of uh, 1st Street North and Kirkcaldy Drive uh, or Veterans Way. Uh, uh, that street is uh, uh, over there. And looking in more closely, it is uh, mid-block uh, on, on the east side of 2nd Street uh, between Dufferin and Ross Avenues. And this is a view of the uh, front of the site uh, recently. And there is an existing encroaching fence and gazebo along the uh, south side of this site. And this is a view of the rear yard of, of this particular site. And this is a view of the uh, paved rear lane that exists behind this property. And uh, yes, those a conditional use is to allow for a duplex dwelling on an interior lot in the residential single detached zone. Excuse me. Uh, so this is the site plan submitted by the applicant uh, showing uh, two units uh, front and back, uh, one each. Uh, proposed uh, parking off the back lane only. Uh, waste collection bins also off the back lane. Uh, waste collection is off the back lane in this area. And this is the uh, a, uh, um, rendering of how the uh, duplex dwelling would look like from the front. Again, submitted by the applicant. So in our analysis, uh, we, uh, uh, we do acknowledge that there are mostly detached dwellings in this area. Uh, however, this new duplex uh, will be uh, single story in height with rear parking and so it has similar uh, design traits as the existing dwellings in this area. Uh, we do note that the, uh, the fence and gazebo that belongs to 935 on 2nd Street North, that is a property immediately to the south, uh, currently encroaches onto this site and so we are recommending that the uh, gazebo be relocated as a condition of approval to avoid complications associated with encroachments. Um, so gazebos they do have setback requirements the reason why we stay silent about fences is that there are no setback requirements for fences under the zoning bylaw. Oh, okay. Uh, this site is within the residential area and uh, therefore this proposal should increase diversity of housing options in the area. Uh, we also note that the rear parking must be hard surfaced due to the rear lane being also paved uh, in accordance with the zoning bylaw. And so we are recommending a, a few conditions of approval all tied to them, uh, uh, to them applying or obtaining a future building permit. Uh, so lot grading uh, plan demonstrating that all site runoff uh, runs towards the front street, not to the sides nor to the back. Uh, amending the site plan to show hard service parking uh, off the rear, as well as uh, relocating the, uh, the gazebo of the neighbors uh, to comply with the zoning bylaw. In terms of public outreach, the applicants uh, did mail out their package to property owners and did door-to-door -door canvas uh, in May. Uh, there was a concerned neighbor uh, uh, along 1st Street North expressing concerns about the, on the lot size of this duplex, uh, but the applicant did explain that it's a front to back, not a side to side design. Um, as of the writing of the report, we did receive one letter of opposition, but as of closing the day, we received a few more, uh, uh, two more letters of opposition and one uh, for information. So that's total four letters. Uh, the uh, one that came in last minute today was, is the uh, letter of concern uh, that is from the actual neighbor to the south. Uh, just uh, wondering uh, who is responsible for uh, 
uh, for tearing down or moving the gazebo and or fence. Um, so as far as the city is concerned, uh, we do not, um, um, it, it doesn't matter to us who is actually taking it down as long as it is taken down. So it just, ultimately it is a discussion between the two property owners uh, to, to sell this matter. Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Mock? All right. Um, thank you. <laughs> so, um, well presented. And the applicant, in this case, do you wish to come forward and state your name and see if we have any other questions for you? Hi, my name is Joe Schroeder. I am <coughs> the representative for Cedar Ridge Construction. The owner of the, the lot. Um, is there anything that, you know, from what you've heard of the presentation, anything you'd like to add or? Uh, sorry, please bear with me. I'm a little nervous. No, it's fine. It's my first application like this. Sure. So, um, I received the letters of concern. Uh, one of them was actually a petition as well. And uh, the surrounding neighbors raised some, some very valid points, um, one being a lack of yard space. And our intent was that um, such a beautiful green neighborhood already has a large amount of green space, being the Riverbank Discovery Center, Kirkcaldy School, um, areas like, like that in the area. Um, regarding the fence and gazebo, we would be more than willing and pleased to undertake the moving of the gazebo and construction of a new fence for the neighbor as a gesture of goodwill. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant then? Commissioner Major. Uh, through the chair to the applicant. Uh, so the main concern was basically lawn area or green space on this site. That was the concern. Thank you. Thank you. Do you happen to know how long the site's been vacant? Um, to my knowledge, the site has technically been always vacant. It was previously a part of a neighboring lot and was subdivided. So there's never been a structure on the site. Uh, my, my company, the company I work for, has owned this site for over three years. And over the last three years, we have made many efforts to develop a single family dwelling on the lot. Um, it's just, it's getting less and less feasible to do so. Hence the application of our conditional use. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any other questions? Uh, Mr. Mark, um, let me ask, uh, there's no, it's a conditional use, there's no um, attached variation. So I take it that all of the setbacks um, are in place like this, this house is not taking up more property on or more space on the property than is what it's allowed? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, yes. So the proposal complies with the zoning bond, so that is why there is no variance application associated with this. Right. So the, the neighbor's concern about losing a vacant lot to a house that has a smaller yard, you're not actually making a smaller yard than you're needed to, so I don't see how there's a, a concern there. Thank you. Also, if I may take the opportunity to add, um, uh, I believe it was in the report, I, uh, I'm not too sure, but to further add to the applicant's uh, answer to your question about this property, um, it was originally part of the property to the south, to which this gazebo belongs actually, and uh, it, there was a title split done according to our record search in 2015. Uh, yeah, sorry, question. subsequent yeah. question through the chair to Mr. Mock or the applicant. Do you know, is it the same owner to the south now that did the subdivision or has that changed hands also? Uh, through the chair, our city rec to a commission major, our, in our record search, we did not find a, we could not confirm as to the ownership at the time. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. No other questions? Great, thank you very much for coming up. You. You, you did very well. Yeah. All right, so if there are no um, additional questions for administration, I'll entertain the motion for closing the public hearing, Commissioner Anderson. 
at the public hearing for conditional use application C-05-21 at 941 2nd Street North be concluded. A seconder, Commissioner Hobson. All those in favor, that's unanimous. And now a motion for the conditional use. Okay. Uh, that conditional use application C-05-21-B to allow for a duplex on an interior lot in the residential single detached zone be approved at 941 2nd Street North in accordance with the attached letter of intent attachment A1 and site plan and attachment B3 and elevation plan and attachment B4 subject to the owner or successor of uh, the listed uh, three conditions there. Excellent seconder for that, Commissioner Major. Uh, discussion, Commissioner Anderson, you was just speaking um, Looking at the um, rendering of the uh, proposed uh, building, you wouldn't know that it was a duplex. I think it will fit in there. Uh, we've had other um, applications of the same, and it seems to work into the neighborhood. Uh, so I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Commissioners, any other comments? or Just that I'd agree with Commissioner Anderson that on a 44 by 120 lot, it's pretty tight to begin with. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're doing an admirable job in fitting it into the neighborhood. It'll be some new construction and uh, new units that would help out, I'm sure. I agree. Plus, it's good PR that you'll move the gazebo. <laughs> right, if there's something more, I'll call the question. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. So, um, given our space restraints, um, you're welcome to. We'll finish. Um, for now. Great. Thank you very much. Go that way. Same door. <laughs> Sorry. Last time it was that door. <laughs> uh, the, the coming days. Great. Okay, thanks. Guess we're just using one door. All right. Um, we'll move on then to item C. Variation, uh, sorry, variance application for uh, 7596 Street. Mr. Mark. Thank chair. you again, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> and uh, we'll wait for the presentation to come on board again. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll just. Okay. Just make it sure mm -hmm. we're okay. Go, we'll go ahead. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the interruption there. So uh, variance application for 759 on 6th Street. Uh, so generally this is in the south central part of Brandon uh, on 6th Street uh, uh, south of the CN Railway. And uh, more specifically it is at the northeast corner of the intersection of 6th Street and College Avenue. It is on the edge of uh, uh, the boundary between uh, pre-existing residential and light industrial lands. So the industrial lands are shaded in gray, as you can see in this map, and the residential is generally shaded in yellow here. Uh, this is uh, the view of the uh, front of the site with the, uh, with the existing house standing on this property right now. And this is the southwest corner of the, of the site with uh, uh, shown here. So if you viewed from uh, College Avenue, and this is uh, the uh, lane uh, on the east side of this property off College Avenue heading northwards. And these are just a few photos of the surrounding area. Uh, so the upper right photo you see is the one industrial property immediately on the other side of the, that lane that we just showed. And uh, upper left is an existing uh, multiple dwelling building on the southeast corner of the intersection and some other existing dwellings uh, in, at that intersection as well. So the variance request is to reduce the reverse corner side yard uh, from 4.6 meters to 3 meters in the residential moderate density zone to allow for the development of a 10-unit multiple dwelling building. 
so to clarify, as you can see in the site plan here, the uh, cor reverse corner side yard is the south side facing College Avenue. So 6th Street is considered to be the front yard for this site. Okay. Uh, so the building will be facing College Avenue with parking flanking on the north and east sides of this, uh, of this building. Uh, this is the uh, elevation rendering submitted by the applicant showing how the building would look like uh, with, the, with the units. I forgot to mention um, the 10 units, uh, so it is three stories. The first story will only have two dwelling units uh, because the back portion of the building will, be, uh, will have parking. Uh, it will be decked parking. And then the, the two stories above it will have uh, four dwelling units with the rear units extending over the parking spaces on the main floor. In our analysis, uh, there are only a few reverse corner sites in this surrounding area, mostly uh, further west on College Avenue, and they, and they have limited corner side yard setbacks, actually. Uh, considering the distance from the site to the auto service building and their site access at 750 on 5th Street, that would be the property on the other side of the lane, uh, as well as the existing shortened corner side yards on other nearby properties along College Avenue, uh, the impact of the setback reduction should be minimal. Uh, the proposed three meter setback complies with the typical corner side yard setback of three meters seen in the surrounding area. Uh, there is no injurious effect on the site of the 4.6 meter setback requirement. However, uh, shifting the building closer to College Avenue provides more distance between the proposed building and the northern sight line which accommodates the proposed deck parking spaces and the driving aisle to conform to the zoning bylaw requirement, as well as pushing that, uh, that building away from the existing uh, residence uh, in the neighbor to the north. And the area is designated residential under the development plan, and the proposal maintains this use. Apart from the variance request that we are dealing with tonight, the proposal complies with all other provisions in the zoning bylaw. Uh, so we did receive a uh, letter of opposition uh, prior to when we finalized this report last week. Uh, the opponent uh, raised concerns that this new development may decrease the, uh, the prop value of their own property. But as of closing the day, we did not receive any further uh, letters uh, with respect to this application. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Mark? Commissioner uh, Anderson. Mr. the Chair. Um, the hydro pole there, Andrew, does it have to be moved? And what about the trees? Any being saved? Um, through the chair to Commissioner Anderson. I need to open up the site plan proper. The uh, slides are a bit too small. Give me a moment. Uh, uh, but I believe the app and can't speak further to it. I just need to, I just can't answer right now just because I can't see the site plan clearly at this time. And so you mentioned about the hydro pole and trees. Trees. Um, the urban landscape design standards does say that if possible, try to save uh, save existing trees as, as much as possible. But again, uh, the applicant can speak further to uh, to if they can be or if not, why not? And uh, and if so, how to if they have a plan for that. If there are no other questions. Um, at um, through you to Mr. Mock, uh, I, I don't know whether it'll make any difference to this or not, but I notice in the applicant's letter, they state that the length of the lot which faces College Avenue is 70 feet point or 11 inches or 21.4 meters. And yet the site map or the drawing for the site shows it as 120 feet or 36.633 meters. I, I don't know that there, there's a bit of a discrepancy. I'm not sure that it will really make any difference, but uh, it may want to be corrected somewhere along the line. Are there any documents reflecting that? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, now I have opened the site plan. Yeah, the site plan does show 120 feet. Um, depth so east west, which is typical of of lots in this area. Mm -hmm. The width um, of the property so north south it does show to be 
99 feet 8 inches according to the site plan. Yes. So yeah, so you have to, uh, there could be a typo there and again if it, if it was the applicant's submission then the, the, the applicant again could provide some clarity on that. And since I'm able to open the site plan, yes, the site plan does indicate that the existing hydro pole close to the southeast corner of the site uh, to be removed or relocated. Oh, okay. Um, shall we hear from the applicant? Do you have no other questions? Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, we could. Uh, yeah, we do have the site plan, but sorry, you want it uh, to be shown? Yeah, if it's possible. Unless everyone has it on their screen. I think for the benefit of the uh, live stream audience, mm -hmm. if we can bring up the uh, presentation, I already have the site plan showing there. Please and thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Kate McKenzie from Myriad Design and Keller Developments. And to speak to your question, the site plan is the one with the accurate dimensions, not the letter. That must have been a mix up on my part. Um, just, I guess. Andrew's kind of spoken to most of the points I would make about the size of the building and the location of it on the site. Um, and yes, we're going to remove the hydro pole. As far as trees, we do always try to keep as many trees on site as possible. Um, it's unlikely we can keep the ones in the lane and near the neighbor's fence, unfortunately. But of course, we would keep the boulevard trees and plant as much shrubbery and trees in front of the building to sort of give it that look back as much as possible. Um, the only thing I guess I really wanted to say is when we were looking at this design, we had considered the building facing 6th Street, but it looked kind of cramped on the site. And by turning it and moving out, we're further away from the neighbor's property, giving them a little bit more privacy and also hiding the parking from the College Avenue, which gets better aesthetics for the building, we thought. Yeah, so if you have any questions about the design. Commissioner. To the chair, um, I'm just curious, are you planning a, to build a fence on the north side of, the, of your parking lot? It is, it was our plan and I guess still is depending on our conversations with the neighbor. It's our understanding she really likes her fence and wants to keep it. Um, if the city wants us to build a higher fence for privacy, we incorporate that in our plan. It's not an issue for us. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, just a comment. It's um, the lot is a lot larger than what you think it is. Like until you go around and, and look at it, uh, it's very deceiving when you just drive by it. Any other questions? I'll let Darren speak to our community outreach if that's okay. Yes, yeah, certainly. Hello, oh, Darren Milk. I'm not officially sure who I work for. Um, yeah, I spoke, I tried several times to meet with the neighbor, finally was able to yesterday. One of the, probably one of the nicest, toughest, yet kindest people I've come across with these canvases. Uh, lived there for 35 years. Is there on her own now. Property owner has lived at his property for 32 years. They're quite close. Her, him and her son are friends, grew up together. Um, so he's also leaving. So it's a lot of change for her. Um, we also spoke about the opportunity when it's time to downsize, to stay in the neighborhood and move over to this building potentially. Or hopefully, we spoke and said, hopefully next summer I come to say hi to you and you're sitting in the backyard with three ladies that moved into the apartment and you're having coffee in the backyard. So in that way, you know, it could, be, could turn out to be a positive having more people there. The fence was her concern. I sent her some pictures today. Um, she emailed me this morning, said she'd like the fence to stay. I emailed her for clarification to say you'd like a fence to stay or that fence to stay and sent her some pictures of some privacy fences that we've had to do on some other projects. I haven't heard back from her on that. Um, and I emailed her the uh, YouTube link because she asked for that so she could watch. Um, yeah, Kate spoke to the building moving further away from her by doing this. Also, the privacy. This, there would have been balconies that would have been somewhat looking into her yard if we were facing sixth. 
And this way now by turning, there's only one bedroom window in each unit that faces north, which is far less than what would have happened if we were facing sixth. Um, yeah, and you guys talked about the 99 by 120 lot. If this was a 66 lot, there would be more consistent with some of the other properties in the neighborhood that are six plexes, but it would have created the same type of privacy or change too. So um, it just is the size of this lot. And we're following, like Andrew said, we're following the density calculator for RMD for 10 units. Would have been six if it was 66. So yeah, um, I plan to keep working on her to make sure she gets the fence that she wants and uh, work with the builder to be as kind and considerate of of her as this build goes on so thank you any questions no other comments from any of the other neighbors i was i didn't hear from anybody else you know i mean i really because it's on this corner mm -hmm. i really focused i felt like i didn't really really need to keep knocking on anybody else's door but hers you know on this particular one thank you Uh, commissioners, do you have any last questions before we cl look at closing the public hearing? And nothing coming in. Well, all right, I'll entertain that motion. I can do it. You want to do Okay. Commissioner Robson. That the public hearing for variance application. Yeah. <laughs> for V. Dash eleven dash twenty one at seven fifty nine six Street be concluded. A seconder, Commissioner Anderson. All those in favor? So that closes the public hearing. And now the variance application. Do I have a remover? I I can do that. Okay, Commissioner Anderson. That uh, variance application V dash eleven dash twenty one to vary note nine of table ten of the zoning bylaw by decreasing the required reverse corner side yard from 4.6 meters to 3.0 meters in the residential moderate density zone be approved at 759 6th uh, Street in accordance with the letter of intent attachment A, attachment attached site plan, uh, attachment B3 and elevation plan attachment B4 subject to the owner or successor entering into a development agreement with the city of Brandon with the following conditions and there are five conditions listed and that administration be it authorized to prepare a development agreement containing all conditions and requirements to protect the city's interest in accordance with any uh, procedures, policies, bylaws, and acts. Thank you. Seconder? Well, um, hi, Commissioner Hobson. Right, Commissioner Anderson, do you have to speak to that motion? Um, this will fit in with the neighborhood. There is a mixture of single homes and um, apartment blocks in here. Uh, so, and it's close, I think there's a bus stop close, and it's uh, close to shopping, uh, walkways anyways, and uh, I think it looks nice. I'm in agreement. I agree as well, like it's, it does fit the area, and as long as they're addressing the one concern with the wall, uh, the fence, I think there's no problem with it. I, I, I agree with the, the project. It's. It's unfortunate for the lady next door. I can sympathize with the 30 years and, and not wanting things to change. Uh, unfortunately, as was mentioned, they could reduce the size of this just even a bit and it wouldn't even be here. Yes. So I, I appreciate what they've done with it and, and I agree with it. Yeah, and I as well, and the, um, by turning the um, building, which um, in part um, leads us to this uh, variance. I think it does better situate the building. So all those in favor, if that's carried here. Not quite finished. We'll move to item 
uh, D, the bylaw 7306 rezoning and subdivision um, along 34th, 26th, and 34th Street. Thank you again, Mr. Chair, and uh, we will get the uh, presentation up momentarily. Thank you. Uh, so yes, so it is a uh, combination of rezoning and subdivision uh, for uh, uh, 1901 and 1955 on 34th Street, as well as 1906 on 26th Street. And just to give you a heads up, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there will be some tag teaming between myself and uh, Mark Allard in, in terms of our presentation, as there are some technical aspects to which he can better speak to. Thank you. Uh, so the uh, site in question is located in the southwest part of the city, uh, in a uh, developing part of the city. Um, zooming in more closely, uh, this site is located at the southwest corner of the intersection of Maryland Avenue and 26th Street, and it is east of Phase 1 of the Bella Bellafield Neighborhood Plan area. Uh, so this is just a, a, an oblique view of the uh, site in question. The area circle, just for reference, is the uh, existing 26th Street Maryland Avenue intersection. So you notice how it is an offset intersection right now. Uh, this is just another look. So instead of looking northwards, we are now looking southwards. So generally we're above that same intersection that we were talking about earlier, looking south uh, to the rest of that property. And you will see Christian Heritage School just in the upper left corner of, of this photo here. Uh, so the rezoning is to go from the AG80 zone, which is under the old Cornwall zoning bylaw, uh, to the RL residential low density zone. And uh, just a quick explanation, uh, this area was annexed uh, by the city in uh, 2012. Uh, during the annexation process, the old zoning under the arm of Cornwallis uh, carried over. And so that is why we are still dealing with, uh, with this zone that does not typically appear in our City of Brandon zoning bylaw. The applicant is also applying for subdivision to create 63 bare land condominium lots and extending a portion of a public road. And uh, this is uh, a uh, map that we produced showing the proposed subdivision and rezoning. So the areas shown in red are the proposed condominium uh, units. Uh, in this development. Uh, the proposed yellow areas are going to be common elements as part of that condo development. Uh, the uh, thick black lines represent the uh, private streets within this development. And the uh, gray hashed uh, area to the south, that is the proposed extension of Tipperfield Drive. Uh, this is the applicant's uh, submitted subdivision application map. So that shows the uh, 63 um, condominium units that are being proposed along with a couple of common elements and then uh, as I mentioned uh, Chipperfield Drive is being extended uh, a bit to the south there. Uh, in our analysis the uh, first of all with respect to the development plan uh, the planning and building department buildings department believes this proposal conforms with uh, various policies of the development plan including locating it uh, this development in an area designated residential and providing a range of housing densities within neighborhoods. Excuse me. Uh, with respect to the Southwest Brandon secondary plan, uh, we believe it does comply with the secondary plan, including locating proposed multiple dwellings in residential low density designated areas, as well as proposing to have uh, these types of dwellings being developed in the RLD zone. Uh, with respect to the Bellafield neighborhood plan, which does apply for this area, overall, um, both uh, these properties were not part of the original concept, right and closer to this intersection of 26 in Maryland. Uh, so the applicant has submitted an updated phasing plan to reflect the proposed development phasing status. Uh, we do recommend that the overall neighborhood plan be updated prior to the next stage of development just to uh, just to make sure that everything is up to um, is uh, is coordinated with each other in terms of the documentation um, with respect to transportation uh, this is the first part in which I will hand over to uh, to mark to speak to uh, thank you Andrew and uh, good evening mr. chair and commission members um, Parts of the uh, neighborhood plan uh, identified that the 26th Street intersection with Maryland uh, was to be uh, constructed concurrent to um, the original phase two development. 
Um, and, and that partly be because of the, the offset or staggered intersection that uh, Mr. Mock referred to earlier. Um, currently, the, the intersection does operate in an unsafe manner uh, with the north and south legs of the intersection being staggered. Uh, any additional traffic will certainly further complicate uh, the matters in this area. Um, as the necessary right-of-way was not available uh, to accommodate the intersection, so the property to uh, the east is privately held um, and, and there wasn't uh, an ability to secure uh, the necessary right-of-way, um, uh, we've agreed that uh, these improvements uh, can be deferred. Um, the intersection of 26 and Maryland uh, is proposed to be reconfigured on an interim basis uh, with this proposed development. Um, 26th Street to the south, uh, so that would be the road that goes to the Christian Heritage School, um, would become an access connection with limited traffic. Um, Maryland Avenue and 26th Street to the north uh, would then be treated as a three-way stop, which is a fairly standard configuration. Um, traffic analysis demonstrates that the intersection of Maryland Avenue and Derlego Drive, which is part of the existing uh, Bellafield development to the west, uh, can accommodate the rerouted traffic um, that would otherwise use 26th Street South going to the Christian Heritage School. Next slide, please. Uh, final intersection improvements uh, will be constructed uh, once the right-of-way has been acquired. Uh, city administration has met with the Christian Heritage School who stated concerns of the current intersection operations uh, and uh, are supportive of the proposed interim and long-term traffic configurations. Uh, city administration recommends a condition for the development that traffic to the school will be diverted through Chipperfield Drive. Uh, so it would be further west on Maryland, uh, south on Drolego, and then across to back to the east on Chipperfield Drive uh, to 26th Street um, uh, to be able to uh, accommodate the Christian Heritage School traffic. Next slide, please. Um, some of the other servicing, the applicant uh, is proposing to extend uh, the wastewater servicing um, from existing Marquee Crescent, uh, which is north of this development, uh, through a public reserve uh, to service the development. Um, we have assessed and determined that there is capacity available within the marquee system. Uh, future developments will be serviced to the south uh, with the proposed new city infrastructure. So um, this is one of the last pieces of infrastructure that, that should go north. Uh, there potentially is a small volume of capacity left in the northern system. Uh, all drainage flow from the development uh, will be directed to the existing stormwater pond as outlined in the neighborhood plan. Okay, thank you, Mark. And I will just quickly uh, jump in here uh, before I go back to Mark. Uh, with respect to the consistency of the zoning bylaw, the proposed residential low density lots are consistent with uh, the bulk and setting requirements under our zoning bylaw, so uh, they, what they're proposing is compliant. Um, I will bring Mark back uh, to speak some more because um, when we had uh, finalized this report uh, earlier, um, the applicant uh, did uh, come back and uh, raising some concerns and which had us some discussing about some options possibly to consider. Uh, so I will now uh, bring Mark back to uh, speak to uh, the uh, two items and the options being considered for those. Um. The developer was concerned about paying uh, the financial contribution uh, to 26th Street. And it, it, it's that portion uh, from the intersection until 26th enters um, 
fully enters the, the proposed uh, subdivision. Um, pay, they're, they're requesting that payment for this section of road be covered under um, development charges and, and the policies under development charges. Um, if the Planning Commission so chose, this option um, could be omitted um, uh, with the recommendation to Council. Um, the extension of 26th Street to the south of Maryland is classified as a collector um, and is under the policy, the responsibility of the developers as a boundary improvement. So each, the developer on either side of that roadway uh, would share the cost of uh, extending that, uh, that piece of 26th. Um, I'll mention that the further extension of 26th Street through the future proposed development uh, will be at the full cost of this proponent. Uh, again, that meets with the, uh, uh, the development charge uh, policy that we have. Uh, the city has established practice and policy of requiring boundary improvements between the landowners on both sides of the street on a 50-50 basis, as I mentioned. Um, if the Planning Commission chose not to recommend a contribution, uh, this would be through a decision that this is not a boundary improvement uh, and, and funding would have to be secured elsewhere, currently not part of the development charge contributions or within the city's capital plans. Um, the access to the Christian Heritage School um, remain uh, through the current 26th Street alignment uh, is another request that, uh, that the developer has put forward. Uh, I think their concern is rerouting that traffic uh, through their development on, on an interim basis. Um, again, if the Planning Commission show chooses, uh, they could admit this from the recommendation. Um, 26th Street and Maryland intersection is currently unsafe for road users and pedestrians. Um, we did have this analyzed by an independent engineering party uh, who did comment on this. Uh, and, and this will only worsen as the traffic volumes increase uh, due to the development of the Bellafield area. Uh, if the Planning Commission chooses to remove these conditions, the traffic flow from the school will continue through the offset intersections until the lands to the east are developed and the intersection is realigned uh, to a safer configuration. Uh, at this time, we are not um, confident about when that land will become available. Both the city and the current developer have approached the landowner uh, and they are not interested at this time in selling. Thank you, uh, Mark. And then to uh, cap it off, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry for going a little bit over time. Uh, as for public outreach, uh, it was not required since the applications are in accordance, in accordance with the Bellfield uh, Neighborhood Plan. And um, when we did uh, finalize the report, we did receive an objection to this application. Uh, the main concern from the objector was about construction work of the sewer servicing for the development from Marquee Crescent. Uh, that may kill trees and affect the fencing on their on the adjacent private property. And as of closing the day, though, we did not receive any further uh, correspondence with respect to this application. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Commissioners, it's a complex one, so expect some questions. Mr. Mr. Chair, I just have two questions. Um, does Maryland go right, will it be going right to 34th? Is that the plan? Uh, through the chair uh, to the commissioner, no. Um, uh, it was decided at some future point that uh, Maryland would not continue through to 34th. Um, um, so it, it goes just beyond uh, Durlego or Marquis. Um, and uh, so the, the answer is no, it won't connect 34th. Uh, and the second one, um, there isn't enough room for a traffic circle for 26 and Maryland? Or you still have to encroach on yeah, this other person's yeah. land? Uh, one of the things about a, a, a traffic circle compared to a uh, typical standard four-legged intersection is the additional requirement of right-of-way. Um, so it is uh, more substantial. 
Um, we spent um, several hours looking at different alignment, different intersection treatments to try and accommodate um, the developer to allow him to uh, connect to the intersection. The intersection will be a development charge that the city will undertake. From the intersection south, there is the piece that is a boundary improvement, and then the further piece is at the full cost of the uh, of the developer. Um, so we tried several ways in attempting to uh, both deal with the landowner to the east and um, look at several different configurations of an intersection, um, and, and we feel that this is the best approach at this time. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Major. Um, I'm, I'm trying to digest a lot of information here, and I, I appreciate how how difficult a task this is. Uh, I noticed from one of the the maps with this phase, it didn't appear as though Chipperfield Drive was going to be extended all the way to 26th Street. Is that? That, that is correct, correct. Um, and that is one of the conditions that uh, is presented here today, um, that the developer would be required to extend Chipperfield uh, as an interim roadway. Uh, we are asking them that they construct it simply to a gravel surface, similar to what 26th uh, south of Maryland okay. is today. Um, uh, so yes, there would be some additional road built, um, and it would be interim. I don't think it would be on any uh, alignment that would be permanent for the future. Um, so it, it, it would be um, a cost that we're asking the developer to undertake. Mr. Chair, if I may add further to what uh, my colleague ha has stated, if I can just quickly ask to uh, turn on the uh, presentation again so we can see the map in question. Thank you. So yes, yeah, so you are correct in that they're proposing Chipperfield to, to not extend further yet, uh, but part of the overall scheme for Bellafield is that uh, 26th Street or whatever this name of this collector road will be, will head south from 26th in Maryland and then curve towards the southwest so that eventually Chipperfield and that new collector street will join further inland uh, within the developer's uh, area here. Okay. Uh the next question I have, if we could leave that slide up, the uh, east-west private road through these condominiums, is that going to be allowed to connect to 26th Street now or like right when it's kind of when it's built or like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if we're already having an issue with some traffic on 26th Street, maybe it should be going back over to, I think, Derlego and down to Maryland. Is that how it's going to be, or? So I think the intention right now, and again, as presented in the, uh, uh, in the documents that you have, is that there will be, um, uh, or we're proposing that bullards be uh, set up um, at the intersection of that roadway in 26th. Um, and that will service as uh, a secondary emergency access. Um, so for the interim, um, there will be no means of regular traffic or unauthorized traffic using the private road internal to the development to, to connect to 26th. In the future, when the intersection and 26 South is built, um, we will reassess at that time depending on uh, the, the, the length of the intersection and the operation of that access uh, in the vicinity of the intersection, if that will function properly. Um, uh, you can confirm this with the developer. I think there's a desire to, for a connection there. Uh, on the interim, we're saying no. But as a final alignment of 26, we did say that we would give it consideration. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions at this time, or shall we? 
hear from the applicant. Yeah, I think we are. Mr. Chair, good evening, Planning Commission members. Um, my name is Steve McMillan. I'm here on behalf of uh, Bellafield Holdings and VBJ Developments. Uh, as Andrew stated, uh, we're looking for, to do a 63 uh, condominium development. It's a bit of an extension off of the loop development that we have next door. Um, we had, as I'm sure many are aware, like the housing sales and the market's been quite crazy so everything sold out in this probably about six to eight months ahead of time so i think we have one unit left and really? so this is our next next development and it seems the most um the units that are selling the most are slabs uh so we are doing um just one story slabs usually two bedroom possibly one bedroom but all single level um that seems to be Home buyers and retirees are, are looking for. So it's, um, yeah, so the, this one is coming with a few issues as, uh, as we can see in, in the report. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I'll go through the conditions. This is going to be another one where there's a lot of things that I, I'd like changed, um, but it might be one where um, the planning commission can obviously make any changes they wish or pass it along and this will go to city council and we may have to do that but um, to answer a few of the questions uh, that have come up um, or I, I mean I guess I can just go through some of the the conditions so is everyone going off the report that has them lettered or are they going off of the development agreement that has numbers lettered one. letters mm -hmm. okay uh, so for letters, A, we're okay with, uh, B, the contribution towards the street, as uh, Allard had stated, I mean, we're not in agreement with, with paying that fee. Um, this is something that I brought up through development cost charges when they were first uh, instated a few years back. This road is an extension of 26th Street. Um, the reason it curves in is because the city um, didn't retain ownership of the entire right-of-way, so there's only a 33-foot right-of-way that goes down there. Um, in the secondary plan, this intersection and roadway is fully on the neighbor's property, so a boundary improvement, because once it comes into our property, we're being instructed that we have to pay 100% of the cost of it. If it's on the other person's property in the future, whoever buys that would be on the hook for 100% of that at worst case. My opinion though, uh, and our company's opinion is 26th Street is a major collector in the city and takes traffic from different neighborhoods and brings it south. Right now 34th Street acts as kind of the main collector at 18th Street, 1st Street, an argument for 9th I guess. Um, but once this road is extended down to Patricia Avenue and our annex lands are developed for commercial use, this road is going to take traffic from Linden Lanes, Meadows, you know, anything that's in close proximity to 26th Street all the way to Pacific, down this road through our development to get to that commercial development. So this road, in our mind, is a development cost charge road that should be paid for by development cost charges. Intersection is a development cost charge intersection. The portion of 26th Street that is from Maryland back up to where it's twinned with the median, that's covered under development cost charges for the future upgrade. But some, once it hits Maryland Avenue, all of a sudden it's, it's our job to pay 100% of it. Once it goes through, it's gonna connect past Patricia down into our annex lands at that point, that road will not continue any further because in the future, the Western Bypass will, is, is planned to go um, west out to Kemney. We're not allowed access to that road. So, also, I believe the cost is a lot higher than it should be. We received a, an amount that our payment was gonna be around $260,000. And then when we said that the road actually shouldn't be that much, 
and it was for a length of 221 meters. We said it actually should be 190 meters because the, the traffic circle actually extends down. And then once it gets to the width of the future right of way, that's when the road itself is just the road payment. So the road reduced in 30 meters, but increased in price by $400,000. So our, our contribution went from 260000 to $437,000. Um, item C, uh, we have no issue with. Items D, E, and F that all deal with the Christian Heritage rerouting, we're not in favor of. Um, that, that road was opened by the City of Brandon a year ago as a public right-of-way, and now all of a sudden that we're adding 63 units, now it's unsafe. And now we're going to reroute all that traffic down Maryland Avenue, which is a disaster right now, in through our development with a bunch of new homes and families that have a neighborhood that that road isn't supposed to see that traffic. And now we're going to reroute all the school traffic. And I don't think it's a lot, but it could be school buses. I don't know what else goes on there, but that's all now coming down Maryland Avenue through your Lego Drive in our development down Chipperfield and we're ending Chipperfield to get into our condominium development and now we're going to have to now build an extension of a road for them temporarily. So I haven't seen a, a traffic study. We requested it, we didn't receive it. Um, to me I don't know how it was safe a year ago when the city opened it and now all of a sudden it's, it's unsafe. Our issue is that intersection, we have no control over. We've, we worked hard to get this corner piece for five years in order to kind of get that intersection going. We worked, I don't know, probably for the past six to eight months to try to configure an intersection, even in the interim basis that wasn't a traffic circle that would kind of line up and we could make something work. That didn't end up going anywhere. Um, so, I mean, uh, we don't have control over buying the property. We tried. As Mark said, the city tried. Really the only way I think that this intersection could get built is if the city expropriated a corner sliver off of what they need. That's a word that no one really likes to say or deal with, but unfortunately it's not something where you want to take land that would result in someone's home moving or anything like that or trees taken down, but when you look at the aerial photo of this property, you can just take a corner off, it doesn't affect any trees, and that intersection could get constructed now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're 100% against that traffic going down. No one in our neighborhood is going to want additional traffic going down in interior residential street. Uh, item G, um, don't think we have any issue with that. Item H, we're getting requested to give a four meter by 10 meter portion off the corner of our property. I mean, the, we're not in favor of that. We are looking, we look to see if we could kind of make it work, but we want to have an entrance sign. That's why we left a three meter area for common element on the side of that um, intersection for trees, landscaping, and a neighborhood development sign. <coughs> And now based on a concept um, for a traffic circle, nothing's been designed, we're asking to give up that corner property. When, when the future person sells, they can build it further on there or redesign it to go around our property. There's also the school division property on the northeast corner that you could easily go into a couple feet to, to get the required when the intersection's designed. Because right now we're just going off a of concept. At the gardens? Yes. Or, yeah. No yeah. gardens would be harmed, though. It would no, just well, be, I know, but there's yeah. lots of space yeah. there. <laughs> um, uh, so that was H. We're not in favor of. Uh, item I, um, we're being forced to have all our construction uh, access off of Patricia, which we do have a construction road out there that we use for... Um, most of our development vehicles from Allen and Bolak when we're developing and putting in the water and sewer and everything like that. Uh, we had caught, raised an issue with that because 
there's lots of other developments that are allowed to just use the city streets. We've always been allowed to use city streets. Um, the issue is if it's these double access vehicles that, um, about that one. Yeah, I think it was used for construction access where anything that had a double axle can't can go down a city street. So that's some of our concrete um, pumper trucks when we're, we're pouring basements or when Zenith is pouring curbs or any concrete work for sidewalks. Um, so we're not in favor of that. Um, I mean, items J and K, when we're looking at going through the wastewater main there through that public reserve, like any comments related to that could just be handled through the um, the design drawings. I understand why they're in here. Um, I wasn't aware of the objection until Andrew just brought it up. Um, so I, I'm assuming that has to do with we need to go through that public reserve area, which is a bike path to uh, hook up sewer service. And in that bike path, we would have to take out the bike path, which we'd obviously replace. Um, there is a neighbor on the east side of that, I guess, the northeast side, that does have a fence. But there's also trees that have been planted by the homeowner in the right of way. So, I mean, anything within our property, the, the, the fence, anything that would be within the confines of, of that property, uh, would be replaced and I mean I, I'm hoping we don't even have to go there we're trying to stay out of that however if there's some trees that have been planted not by the city um, I mean we'll do our best to stay out of the way but um, there was no plans for trees to be planted down that public right-of-way um, and then that's where item K I, I says here the developer agrees that any surface restoration within the right of way is required or, as a result of construction to be brought to that of pre-development condition no problem with that include but it says including non-typical surface materials so I don't know we talked about that I don't know what that means if that's a fence 100 percent but if it's trees that aren't city trees I'm not sure if we have to replant every tree and shrub that was planted not by the city Um, uh, number, or I guess letter L, the next one, the developer agrees all stormwater runoff generated by the development is to be directed towards Bellafield stormwater pond. No issue with that because that's where it's supposed to go. However, the northern lots that back onto Maryland, um, the backyards were allowed to drain into the Maryland right of way. So I just don't want that condition to now limit us because I believe our construction drawings for this development has the rear yards of these slabs. It's the back 20, 25 feet going to Maryland. So as long as uh, administration doesn't have an issue with that part, however, the majority, 99% of any land drainage would be taken to, to the pond. Uh, M, N, and O are... Um, standard clauses so those are okay um, uh, I think yeah P is a standard some of these are standard clauses that I, I've had discussions that they just shouldn't be in here because they're not contentious issues it just adds a lot because we're going through the alphabet of, of everything on here um, but yeah P is okay um, Q and R are kind of tied to the neighborhood plan so R, we said we would um, update the neighborhood plan to include that 2.2 acre parcel that was purchased. And then because of that, our green space contribution then has to be increased proportionately to what we did for everything else. So that's kind of what Q and R are. So there's no issues um, with that. And then I believe everything else is good. S to W, kind of all standard, standard items. So Kind of just to recap, the, the issues are contribution to the road. Um, so number one, we feel it should be development cost charge item. I know it's not currently 
in the development cost charges. But I understand the city is going through because they are um, updating it. It's supposed to be updated, I believe, every three to five years, every three years, and it was done in 2015. So I know that's supposed to happen right away, but to me, that it's a development cost charge road, and I, I mean, I, I'll leave it at that. Um, the other major one is the access for Christian Heritage, and I, I've explained that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, we kind of need to, like I always say, I mean, we need to get going and get development happening. Uh, these are all slabs, so they do have to get in before a certain time period in the winter. Um, I understand there are a lot of outstanding issues here. We tried to go through a lot of it together. I think a couple of them we're just not going to agree on, and that'll be left up to the commission or ultimately city council to make that, that final decision. Um, ultimately, when we move into Bellafield in the future where things are a little more easy, we're not dealing with new roads, land isn't owned by us, uh, a cost charge intersection, it just seems there's been a few hiccups in our past couple applications, but I think once we kind of move in interior to the development, a new lift station gets in, this should just be plug in place for most things in the future. However, we don't enjoy arguing about these things, but um, it is what it is. Uh, any questions? Um, you. Commissioner, is Commissioner Anderson will let you. Mr. Chair, uh, does the city bus go through your area, to through Bellafield? Uh, no, it doesn't currently. No? I believe um, through uh, the chair, it, it will at some point, I believe, when um, the transit plan was that it would come down to the future 26th Street and exit on Patricia in the future. So that kind of even, that's a major road kind of helps with our development cost charge argument. But that's that's the transit plan for bus. It could change, but it'll be based on kind of where some of the multifamily development happens, but it is supposed to be happening along that roadway. Through the chair to either Mr. Allard or Mr. Mock, I'm just curious, I'm, I'm looking at this development and drawing parallels to Brookwood. I'm wondering, did Brookwood, was Brookwood required to make contributions to 34th Street? For the chair to uh, Commissioner Major, uh, that that scheme was set up before we had development charges at all. Uh, so they were required to uh, provide a percentage of contributions for improvements, um, if I recall correctly, definitely the intersection of Richmond and 34th. Uh, I, if I recall, there were some contributions, I believe, to some of the nearby arterial streets, so 34th and Richmond as well. But again, uh, the, it has been a while. That was that scheme was established in 2003. But if you wish, I can. So I think a different system of collecting funds for contributions towards that. The other, the other point I would make is um, within our existing uh, development charge policy, typically an arterial route is a development charge uh, roadway. Uh, 34th is an arterial where 26th existing and through the proposed development is a collector. Um, and they've got different definitions of, of purpose and intent. Mm -hmm. uh, in Again, through the chair, perhaps to Mr. Allard, um, the 33 feet that is existing of 26th Street south of Maryland Avenue, was it, where did it come from? Was it, like, was it taken from the west side? And, or this land or or like there's no there's no other half on the east side so it leads me to believe that it must have come from somewhere through the chair and, and 
I've, I've recently come to the city just last year, and maybe Andrew can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, there was a parcel of land there at one time, I think, in which um, access was being used to the Christian school. However, it wasn't identified as a road right of way. Most recently, um, they've converted it to a road right of way. So now we have some sort of authority and responsibility to treat it uh, as public infrastructure. Um, so it was only in light of that 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 piece of land exists as a road right of way. Um, it was, a, as I understand, a parcel at one time and not registered as, as a road right of way. So that was the only piece of land that really existed between um, the land that DBJ owns today and the land that is on the uh, east side of that. And it only goes for, um, I can't remember the distance, but basically just up to the Christian Heritage School, that right of way or that width of land, 33 feet, does not continue all the way through to Patricia. Thank you for that, but through the chair, mm -hmm. again, so it was a parcel that that was used initially and now has been formally opened through a plan, I would imagine, right. of, of right of way, right. a registered plan. So it is, in fact, a right of way now right. that that came like it. It must have been purchased from the west side though because the east side has nothing there there like it there's no that's the problem with the or the the challenge with this area is that there's nothing to be taken from the east because that landowner is not interested right. so this land must have come from the west then Yes. Um, yeah, just uh, just some points of clarification uh, this strip of land here actually does stretch uh, southwards to Patricia Avenue, actually, so it goes from Maryland to to Patricia, actually. Um, and, and to clarify, yes, uh, it was it was not a right of way; it was just simply a parcel. The reason why the city uh, reopened it as a street right of way more recently was because we realized that with people using it to access mainly Christian Heritage School, but also uh, some people have used it as a way to also get to Brentwood. Uh, we realized that there were some uh, uh, jurisdictional and uh, and legal concerns about having public access through through a piece of land that was not considered a right of way. There were some there were some issues related to that. So that really was why we reopened that non-compliant right of way width uh, as a as a right of way uh, for uh, for essentially an interim measure to deal with the existing circumstances there. Um, but as for yeah, the lands there, I'm just speculating. But based on what we're seeing on the um, Cobra, or the City of Brandon Reference Atlas, which I'm not sure if I'm able to pull it on onto this onto the screen here, um, but it appears that this parcel um, was leading towards the western half of the quarter section line. Because I'm looking at there is there are there is at least one property on the. Uh, next to the Christian Heritage School, and there is a gap of similar width between that property and the current 26th Street parcel there, um, to which for some reason that Christian Heritage School owns right now. So, yeah. But that's just an educated guess right now. Caution. Okay, I'm, I appreciate all this information, but my, my real point here is that it appears to me, and I haven't heard anything to the contrary, that this 33-foot strip has already been allocated from this property, not perhaps this owner, but from this property. It has been allocated as a right-of-way. Does it not... To me, it almost seems, and, and I appreciate, um, I, 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 and I'm not familiar enough with, with the 
with all the contributions that the 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 developers have to make I'll, I'll admit that but it seems like there has already been a dedication of a of a half a right of way from this land perhaps not this developer but from this land i'm wondering if in fact that could be taken into consideration i heard mr mcmillan concerned with the amount that has that has been charged and and again i'm i'm not familiar with that but I'm, I'm just wondering where this 33 feet actually came from and if it has been dedicated by this parcel already. Um, uh, through the chair to commission major, short answer is we'd have to look, dig deeper back into the history of that particular um, 26th Street section. Uh, we don't have the answer for you right now. But and I appreciate that. Through the chair, I, I'm. I'm just curious if maybe it should be taken into consideration. That's all. If I may, when you when you look at the parcel that's in front of that single homeowner that's part of the Christian Heritage property, that's 33 feet in width. There was also a contribution required from Brentwood Trailer Court back in 1992 for the, a 33 foot section from their property to make a 66 foot right of way which then when the, our development was given as uh, the secondary plan, when the city put the secondary plan through, and I think when Brantwood came and did their um, expansion, that 33 feet was requirement that they give that up was then relinquished. So, I mean, that it was supposed to be a 66 foot right away, but they don't own all of it, so then when the road curved into Bellafield through the city secondary plan, which they mandated, that's to me that like that's the extension of 26th Street. That just so I'm not sure how our 33. That I shouldn't say ours. The 33 was put there, but it does run on our side all the way down to Tree Avenue. I don't know if the whole thing was opened as a right of way. It might just be to the homeowners or to uh, the homeowner behind Christian Heritage or I think it goes to Christian Heritage and then they have an access agreement to get in. But the reason that that was done though was because of the speed. People wanted, um, the school wanted it to be as a school zone and they couldn't do that when it wasn't a right of way. So when it was changed as a right of way last year then they could put up a 30 kilometer hour I'm not sure if that's been done. I don't recall seeing a 30. It has. Okay. I recall that to be correct. Thank you. No, that's all right. As you say, we have not often get uh, applications with the complete alphabet. We're down to W. It was the. It was. Sure. Commissioner Anderson, do you have anything? No. Thompson. The one question I have, um, probably more to administration, um, but with the proposal, um, there'll be access off um, Chipper Field, but then also the tie into um, Boschman Bay. I think that's right. But isn't Boschman a private road now as well, right? So. Um, are we okay with only having one actual public right of way access? Like, um, if you see what I mean, all the other access would be through private roads within the other condominiums. Right. And, uh, Mr. Chair, that is also why, with respect to uh, the 26 connection that uh, Mr. Allard ha had pointed to earlier, that is why we are still keeping that as a secondary emergency access. So that way, if, heaven forbid, we need to use that access to uh, either, say, deal with an emergency or, or to evacuate, then at least um, that option is still available for these new residents in this development. But as for Boschman Bay itself, um, I'd probably have to defer that to the applicant. I believe I don't recall the proposal calls for a connection to Boschman Bay. There isn't. It, it oh. shows like there is, but there's a great elevation difference of about eight feet. 
Oh, okay, so just from here to there, when I was looking at the picture, it looked like that black line went straight across. Yeah, it, it, it might have just by the way that they, the city did their mapping, but um, the pavement stops at the last unit we have in Boshman Bay, and there's mm -hmm. a curb. There'll be bollards going in there, um, probably some fencing, and then a retaining wall wraps around that's going up along Maryland. It's going to wrap around that last unit, and then the grade drops probably about six feet. I'm not sure what the end result will be. Hopefully it's less. Mm -hmm. um, but just for sewer service, we weren't able to um, tie into that because we'd have to keep the grade going up because it all comes out to Chipperfield, out to Lego, and down to Marquee Crescent. So we'd have to raise the grade of that site probably about 10 feet. It didn't quite work out in the fact that it doesn't connect it's too bad because we didn't own that property originally when we did the other development, so it would have been nice if everything could interconnect, but... Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, just in regards, to, uh, in regards to item K and uh, the comments of Mr. McMillan, uh, I would certainly be concerned and agree with his uh, thought process in regards to trees on the boulevard that have been privately planted. It's, it's always commendable and, and usually residents are, are trying to beautify the area and I respect that. Unfortunately, they do so at the risk of a situation like this where they could lose them, unfortunately. I, I don't believe that the developer should be responsible for uh, for having to replace those if they're not if i may mr chair yeah, yeah no i i think that uh, through our conversation i don't think there's an expectation that the developer Great. would be required uh, i agree they have said that they'll try their best to not impact them uh, just by virtue of maybe impacting the root or the root bulb itself may, may uh, be detrimental enough Great. Thank you. We, I, don't, I don't think we believe that the developer okay. will be responsible. Good. Thank you. The reference to um, non-typical surfacing materials, is that just the bike path? The reference to non-typical surfacing materials, and, and we have made some minor adjustments to some of these conditions, and, and that is one that was taken out. Um, what, what it referred to was interlocking stone that was on uh, adjacent driveways on Marquee. Mm -hmm. So when they undertook their work, there was potential that those driveways would be disturbed. Um, and and non-typical surfacing materials refers to interlocking stone. But we've since taken that out. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, okay. No trees. It's unfortunate because the trees are mature. They're probably about 40 feet tall. It's like like to, but if you disturb the roots, like Mr. Allard said, I mean, it could topple down, so. Commissioners, are we getting close to having the information we need? I see one nod and one shake. <laughs> Well, while you're thinking, let me um, let me ask this question just out loud. The uh, motion is that we're recommending to City Council the approval. This is not yet one of the situations where we're approving. This is still just a recommendation. That is correct because it's a uh, yeah uh, rezoning and subdivision under the Planning Act. Final call is made by City Council. So I, I believe that in the past, with these sort of things that we've actually listed. Um, you know, the A2W um, with recognition that the council will specifically consider items B and K um, for discussion or for further discussion so that we that we acknowledge that we hear you, but in the same time, it's not in our purview to wipe $400,000 off of the city's budget, nor do we want to unnecessarily impose that on you um, when we aren't um, elected that way. So, if I'm not mistaken, that's 
how we did it at least once before. It may have even been with the further extension of Maryland past the. Um, I think we are, did it the last time with you. Well, I think I was here last month, and that's what we did. Yeah. But if you so okay. choose, I wouldn't be against you making the change, and then council can change it back. <laughs> Probably easier for the council to see it all in front of them and then for them to know what they're getting rid of rather than having to. Your, your assessment is correct, Mr. Chair, yes. So you can, um, it is within your, your purview to recommend everything as presented, but then you can also advise council of any concerns or caveats that, uh, that this planning commission may have with certain aspects. And it would also. Take note. It would also perhaps give both the city and the developer a chance to further explore the question of whether or not some land of this part of this broader piece of land has already been bought by the city or donated to the city or whatever that happened to get there right of way. Okay. Because I do think that that's a fair a fair question. Unless it was originally just a long, narrow parcel that had been set aside. Again, the history. Doesn't seem of, like it. Yeah. But something we'll look into as well. Yeah. So you're welcome to ask more questions. Well, I guess if we're, I, I, I can't help but think that uh, Mr. McMillan has brought these items up. Uh, there, there were a number that he had um, concerns with. I'm thinking it could be beneficial for council to be made aware of those mm -hmm. prior to. Now I'm sure Mr. McMillan will be attending that council meeting to perhaps reiterate, but it may be beneficial for council to have that ahead of time so that they can consider it also. So that would be, um, that would be item B, D, E, F, H, I, and perhaps K with the non-typical surfacing materials, but I think that's been addressed for the most part uh, as... I understand the non-typical, I just need, I guess I need a definition. I, I mean, I, I understand what Mark's interpretation is and I agree with it, but... So, so a clarification yeah. could be. But, well, we've also, as I indicated before, um, a recent late draft uh, uh, has taken the term non-typical surface material out of the condition. Okay. Oh, okay. So based on newer than what I got today, like at the end of the day, I didn't, this is that's what this is. And it, still in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That'd be an okay. So, uh, is, so based on what you're saying, then, uh, Mr. Al, then, Mr. Chair, uh, you can take advice from the administration that when referring to K, mm -hmm. um, removing the uh, the last words, quote, including non-typical surfacing materials, end quote. Yes. I did mention L, but Mr. Allard oh. said that, that the lots, that if we're going to drain the backyards of those northern lots, like we did in Boschman into Maryland, that sounded that like. The intention of L had to do with your stormwater drainage system? Not. Okay. The LDS? Okay, sounds good. Again, I, I don't want to ask to close the public hearing because then we can't benefit from Mr. McMillan's input while we answer some of these questions. So do you think you're good now? And, it, and it, to me, it, it does seem that, as you said, the, the B, D, E, F, H, and I all relate more or less directly to the question of the 26th Street and Maryland intersection. Like, uh, they all sort of tie back to how is the city and the developer going to deal with that corner? Yes, so yeah, B and H for sure. Um, 
I deals with the construction access, which, yeah. I mean, we have some yes, issues yeah. with that. Um, and then D, E, and F all deal with the rerouting of Christian Heritage, so that's kind of its own separate separate issue. Um, I think the other things were were addressed. Um, so really just that last, that H, which is kind of part of the intersection. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not against giving some of it. But the, the issue we have is that's the corner into the intersect into our development. And that's going to be where kind of our main sign was to go. Yeah. And when we're basing that um, dedication off of a concept, they may not need it in the future. I understand they need to take something now just in case, but at the same time, that negatively affects us where once that property does sell next door and they can design the traffic circle where it could be accommodated, that's where the intersection is supposed to be. For the city you could come back and, as you mentioned earlier, expropriate a piece of land that was necessary. <laughs> I mean, that's the other option. I know no one likes to hear that, but no, exactly. ultimately, if it's a development cost charge intersection that the city's supposed to design and construct, sometimes you have to take into consideration the need for a piece of infrastructure. It's It happens everywhere, but it's not something that is taken yeah. lightly. I understand that, but this would have minimal impact on that property. Or an intersection there, it's just designing an upgraded one. Thank you. So, commissioners, all right. So I'd entertain the motion then to close the public hearing. Commissioner, Mayor, oops, I already lost my page. There we go. And a seconder. Oh. Okay. Anderson, all those in favor? I'm talking as slowly as possible, so we give Amber a chance to get back before we actually do the oh, the motion yes, because she'll yes, want to. And that was to close the public hearing. That was to close the public hearing. Yes. Thank you. Just making sure that it is on the record for that. Yeah. So, um, we could. Oops, I'm still. Uh, So we could handle the um, the second motion, the recommendation to approve the bylaw rezoning portion, because the conditions all fall into three, which is the subdivision. Oh, do you want me to do that? Sure. All right. Uh, that the planning commission recommends city council is that the one that you yes, want? Yes, the second. Yep. Yep, approve uh, the application to subdivide. No, oh, the, we no, went too far. One page back. At the bottom, there's the planning commission recommends the, to approve the oh, bylaw over change. Here? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, that the public hearing for bylaw number 7306 Z 05. That one's that's what you seconded. We've, we've closed, I've done that one. Yeah, we've closed I'm, the public hearing. I closed. am mixed up now. That's right. It's yeah. number two. Number two? Okay. <laughs> I'll get there. Yeah. Uh, that the planning commission recommends city council approve bylaw number 7306 Z 05 21 to rezone a portion of 1955 34th Street, 1906 26th Street, and 1901 34th Street. Uh, from Agricultural General under the RM of Cornwallis zoning bylaw number 1558-09-99 uh, to residential low density. A second for that, Mr. Hobson. So um, that is just the uh, um, recommendation for the rezoning. All those in favor? So oh, that's carried. We waited for you. Now we have the third motion relating to this, which is the actual subdivision, which contains all of the um, conditions. And perhaps our recommendation to council that they consider some of the conditions um, in light of what we've heard tonight. 
Does somebody want to take that on? I'll, I'll try it. Council Mayor. That the Planning Commission recommend City Council approve the application to subdivide number 4500-21-713, a portion of 1955-34th Street, 1906-26th Street, and 1901-34th Street to create 63 bare land condominium lots and extend a portion of public road Chipperfield Drive in the residential low density zone to subject to the owner or successor entering into a development agreement with the City of Brandon to register in series with the subdivision with the following conditions. A to W Sorry, um, condition one is that development agreement with the with the following conditions, and then there's also um, when you get to it, there's um, yes. after W, there's the other paragraph, and then I I and I I I and four. Uh, okay, I, I'm wondering how can we draw attention to the concerned items? Um, if I may suggest uh, through the chair to commission major. Um, you may, through a separate motion, uh, refer to that, Thank just to keep things simple. Yep. Yep. All right. And that administration be authorized to prepare a development agreement containing all conditions and requirements to protect the city's interest in accordance with any policies, procedures, bylaws, and acts. I uh, uh, providing written Confirmation to the City of Brandon Planning and Building Department that taxes for the property to be subdivided for the current year plus any penalty, interest, and arrears have been paid in full or arrangements must be made satisfactory to Brandon City Council. III, submitting written confirmation to the City of Brandon Planning and Development Department, or pardon me, Planning and Buildings Department that arrangements have been made for Joint Blanket Easement Agreement and Plan of Easement to the Satisfaction of Manitoba Hydro, Bell MTS, Westman Communications Group, and registering the easement agreement along with the easement plan, if required, in series with the plan of subdivision. IV, submitting a street name to the City of Brandon Planning and Buildings Department for review and approval by City Council. Thank you. So that is essentially the motion... Um, as it appeared in our amended agenda. A seconder? I can second it. Uh, are we listing the, uh, the letters that he had issues with? Yes, we'll do that as a separate, oh, uh, separate motion separate after thing. this one's approved. That way it's clear to oh, council. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Any further discussion that we've had? Sufficient? Yes. Do you wish to speak to your motion otherwise? No. I, uh, just that uh, I, I appreciate everyone's input into this. It's a, it's a challenging, a, a challenging issue because of that, the right of way, I will call it, uh, 26th Street or whatever it might be. Um, it's, it brings a whole dynamic to this that, that is a real challenge for everyone. And I, I appreciate everyone's efforts in, in trying to come to a solution with it. Thank you. Um, Any other comments? No? All right, I'll call the question and all those in favor. So that's carried. Now, I would entertain a motion to advise council regarding the information that we've heard during the public hearing. I can sure. give it a shot. Uh, that, uh, that the commission uh, recommends that council take specific notice of items B, D, E, F, H, I, L, was L one? Um, no, L was, and 
and K, I suppose, although it sounds like it's already been remedied, but. Was G one? No. Those are the only ones. Okay. So the, um, all right, that does highlight them, and then we can, do I have a seconder for that? Motion, Commissioner Anderson. Now, if we want, we can speak to it a little bit further, just to make it clear in the record, the purpose of this. Um, I guess the purpose is to, to try and come to some sort of understanding for the, uh, for the right-of-way, the, the 26th Street right-of-way, the, uh, the issues that are, are involved with this, um, stem from from that concern, or, or or that's the the root of the matter, um, for the most part, anyway. It's uh, you know there's there's traffic flows involved through this development, but it stems from that one as well. So I, I think that is the heart of the matter that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Welcome. Did you want to add anything? Um, I think Mr. McMillan has um, come forth with several concerns, and they're valid, I think. And I don't have the expertise for some of these, so I feel it is up to council to decide. Um, so I will be voting uh, to recommend this. And again, I think this is an excellent way for us to um, fulfill our role of, of, of being the council's ears and hearing this. Um, we didn't have any other um, proponents or opponents um, speaking to it, but had we had that, we would also perhaps be adding their comments to such a motion. Um, so I think this is a, a way forward, so I would also be in favor of it. So I'll call the question, all those in favor of that motion? It's unanimous. Excellent. Thank you for your time, Mr. Mellon. And we have one last variance, a variance extension. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. There is no presentation for this one. And I will uh, at, uh, advise the Pine Commission that we did not ask the applicant to come uh, speak to this. We okay. thought that this was a straightforward matter. Uh, given the also the uh, current restrictions and the number of items that were coming tonight, uh, we thought uh, the applicant's attendance was not necessary. So, if uh, if the plan commission wanted to question the applicant, um, you can uh, you can place the fault on on our department for that uh, for asking him to stay home. Um, so, yeah, uh, pretty straightforward. This came to uh, to the plan commission uh, just about a year and a half ago, actually. Uh, so it would have been uh, approved in January of, of uh, 2020. Uh, this was to, uh, to help them expand their, um, uh, the Turtle Crossing uh, uh, campsite. Uh, they, were, they had a proposal to expand the, uh, their operations there. Um, to date, they have not been able to apply for a development permit to proceed with development, mainly due to COVID-19 uh, related uh, challenges. And so, uh, but they hope that uh, the applicant intends to uh, get the, all their ducks in a row and apply for the development permit uh, later this year. Now, normally the, the variance, uh, variance order expires one year after inactivity. Uh, so it should have expired under normal circumstances um, back in January of this year. However, uh, just for the record, the reason why it's been able to extend to, the, to, to where we are today is that because of the pandemic, uh, the province has overruled certain provisions in the Planning Act, and that included the expiry of variance orders. They have temporarily suspended the uh, the, uh, the deadline, so the current order health current orders uh, are slated to expire on July 31st. So that is why the variance order is now deemed to consider to be expiring this at the end of this month rather than back in January of this year. Yes, that's excellent. Thank you. So I would um, entertain the motion to um, 
close the, close you don't have to close public hearing? hearing? No. Oh, okay. Then um, move to approve, I suppose. Use number four there. That the approval deadline of variance order V-03-18-B be extended to July 31st, 2022. A seconder, Commissioner Hobson. All those in favor? So that's carried. So that concludes the public hearing portion of tonight's meeting. We still have some general business um, to conduct, but we'll be ending the, the YouTube broadcast. Thank you for um, joining us.